All right, so the abandoned LSFC needs just a little bit more work to be kind of fully sorted. We took it to the compound, found some issues, fixed some of them. Uh, one of them was front wheels were rubbing, put some spacers on, we got clearance everywhere, and no more rubbing on the lower control arm. Put some new tires on that I had left over from the Miata, so that was good. Uh, and we did some other stuff, rear tires, fixed the rear diff issue that the diff kept sliding up at the front mount and grinding the drive shaft binding and stuff. Uh, but the last and like really the biggest thing that needs to be taken care of on this car, there's a few, but the biggest thing is wiring. The wiring under here is a rat's nest. I got the car like this. I didn't really do anything. I've been wanting to, to fix it. I was going to leave it, but I've had some issues with it and it's super hard to diagnose because it's such a mess. And uh, yeah, I want to fix that. I also want to change the seat out. I have a new, uh, nicer seat. I'm just going to have to build a seat mount for it. And then those gauges basically don't work. One's a wide band and the other one's an oil pressure gauge. And the oil pressure, if you jiggle that mess of wiring down there, it, it jumps all over the place in pressure. So yesterday I yanked these Auber gauges out of my LS Miata. So I have a Holly digital dash in there now. So I don't use these anymore. So we've got oil pressure coolant temp. I got to pull the sensor out of the Miata and then put the plug from this head into where the sensor is in the Miata. We got a coolant loop. Um, while we're messing with the cooling system, we're going to have to re-bleed it. I need to change that. The one that's on there is leaking. So yeah, anyway, just got a handful of things to finish up. For those of you wondering about the Fummins build, yes, it is dark. We're getting a late start. Uh, parts will be here within a day or two, but I want to finish this thing up because I want to take it to the compound, get some more driving in, some more seat time before the next Clutch Kickers comp. We'll be taking the LS Miata to compete with. So uh, yeah, that's the plan, Stanley's. So first thing we need to do, get this dash out out of the way and just start tackling this wiring mess. Should be fun. thing we can do essentially delete this panel like I said we're taking these gauges out well, I'm gonna make a new panel for the new gauges and uh, I want to try to cover this whole thing up but we'll get there we'll get there one thing at a time so let's get this out Ow. I always stab my back on the switch panel up there all right I just want to make sure I get a shot of what this looks like before so if it actually comes out nice we can compare to the after. But there's just so much janky stuff. Like they've got this one wire going to this little distribution box and then a bunch of stuff running off of here with no individual fuses or anything. Just one wire powering like a bunch of stuff. And just, just stuff like that. And then, you know, all these wires just zip tied up here. So I'm gonna try to thin this out. It's just tricky. There's a lot going on under here for how simple it is. Yeah left turn maybe i don't know what that is what does this say oh reverse reverse lights we don't need those where we're going yeah okay i'm gonna take a minute dig through this start sorting it out all right here's where we're at i've got some stuff pulled out there's just so much silly stuff like this like this is a ground and it's all this this whole corrugated section is a ground <laughs> and it's it's only for something that's not being used it, this goes into it for the uh, arc switch panel, but I can just run that where my other ground is and put my relay ground up there and get rid of all of this Nonsense and then like I said, we've got this thing uh, Really the only thing on here that I'm using is the brake lights So I think there'll probably be a couple other things. So instead I'm gonna replace it with this So we'll have a power going to this which we'll just click on when we click ignition and then basically it'll power up this whole little board with all these little spades for fuses um, with fuses so everything will be individually fused so if for example something happens and it shorts out one it's not going to take out everything on that circuit which is a lot of stuff currently so yeah anyway uh, I'm just kind of digging through this and trying to clean it up and organize it as best I can there's some stuff we're gonna have to kind of leave yeah like left turn right turn and this like I'm gonna leave these here in case you know if I ever get rid of this car and someone wants to make it a street car or more street friendly with turn signals they can add them but I don't need them I will not be driving this car on the street except for test sessions. So yeah, I want to mount my OBD2 port, probably like somewhere right around here. Anyway. Well, that cleans things up a lot. Okay.
Dude, I'm telling you, Florida weather. It was 80 something yesterday and yesterday night. I woke up this morning, I'm like, it's a little chilly in the house. Walk outside, 48 degrees. <laughs> oh man, what a time to be alive. So I have most of the wiring done. You can see it now. So we've got all the turn signal stuff that we're not using anymore right here. Just kind of cleanly zip tied up out of the way. Mounted the OBD2 port for when I have to hook up HP tuners. I want to cut that ground and shorten it. It's like looped like 10 times, totally unnecessary. Uh, and then we got our secondary relay for our fan. So basically the way I have it set up, this is a relay board, switch panel. So when I turn the one fan on, the, that relay powers the one fan. And then I just have a little trigger wire going to the second relay to power the other fan. Um, just that way I don't have to use two switches. I mounted this little fuse panel here. So that's going to be my ignition power. So when I turn the ignition on, anything that's hooked up to that will come on. So the only thing I have on it right now is brake lights. But yeah, so I, I've still got some cleaning up and zip tying and routing to do in here. But it, it's mostly sorted out. All the crap is taken out of it. It's thinned out. Um, we've only got the stuff we need. We're good to go. So next order of business is gauges and this coolant loop. I'd rather this thing be dumping all the coolant out. So we'll take the plug out of this first, then we'll take the sensor out of that. There she goes. <laughs> oh, it's windy out here, boys. Hood shocks. If you don't have hood shocks and they make them for your car, get them. Oh, it's cold. Like I said, it's like 48 degrees. That's uh, the equivalent to below zero in Florida. Gotta find the right wrench for that. Uh, okay, it wasn't that tight. Come on, baby. Get finger tight for me. Finger loose. Is it finger loose or finger tight when you're taking something off? I guess finger loose would make more sense, but I've never heard anyone say something's finger loose. It's just hard to get to this thing with the header here. Oh, we need to put thread tape on this bolt. I think I'm ready this time. Got my copper washer. Got my thread tape. Oh, that was a lot of coolant. It's not coolant, it's water, but still. Okay, cool. Tighten that down with a real ratchet. Sweet, I think we're good. Got our sensor. All right, let's snug this guy up. I'm hoping the wire reaches from this side. It should. I had a lot of leftover. At least those two parts fit together. One thing you should not cheap out on is hose clamps. All the cheap hose clamps I've gotten are basically one-time use, if that. As you can see, the little screw just came out of this one. And it's now useless. So, buy nice hose clamps. At least if it's something important. All right, the next thing we need to do in here is the oil pressure sensor. So it had this really janky gauge in here with like this one wire sensor and it read all over the place. The 120, zero, 20, 50, like all over the place. You can see the wire right there, that green wire. Uh, so anyway, um, we gotta get that sensor out and get our new sensor in, but it is back here between the intake manifold and the firewall. You can kind of see it right there. I might, uh, I might be able to get to it. I'm gonna try. Most likely the easiest way to do this is gonna be to just at least pull the intake manifold off and move it forward. And that way I have plenty of room to get to it because this uh, pinch weld here is is like really in the way. Um, but that's the last thing we need to do in here. Change that sensor so that we have our oil pressure and coolant temp in the engine. All right, new sensors in. Uh, so yeah, we just gotta plug it in, run the wire and run the uh, wiring into the car, and then bolt our intake manifold back on. Easy peasy.
All right, we got both our gauges in the, to the engine, oil pressure, coolant temp, and then we've got them running through the firewall there. We got our wires up here. So the coolant temp gauge I just left hooked up when I pulled it out of the Miata. I wanna hook both these up. We'll use this to power them. And uh, yeah, I wanna hook them both up and get them working before we start making our plate here and put the dash back in and all that stuff. All right, got the gauges all wired up and working. It always takes me a minute to remember what to do. So this is oil pressure, this is coolant temp. So the controllers are all the same, um, but how you, like where you put the wires basically changes depending on what sensor. And then you have to go in here and set the parameters for that sensor, whether it's like a, a 10 bar, a five bar, etc. So anyway, it always takes me a minute to remember what settings I need, but we got them working now. Time to get our dash back in, finish this up, get our dash back in, and then we can start making our panel here. All right, well, the dash is back in. We got no more jumbled mess down here. I mean, there's some wires, but you can't really get rid of the wires. But it, everything is simple and sorted now. Everything's easy to diagnose. Nothing's extremely overly long that's like pointless. Like, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. So, yeah, looks nice with the dash back in here. We got our fans working. We got our little fuse box down here. Got our gauges working. So now all we gotta do is just build a panel for here for our two gauges and our kill switch. Should be easy enough. Um, so let's measure that out and cut a piece. So our opening for that is uh, not the same size top to bottom. It's a little smaller at the top. So we gotta trim these corners. Sorry, I gotta move you. You guys are in the way. got a little extra gap on this side but I mean that's about as close as I care to get it for this thing so sweet now we gotta figure out mounting make our gauge mounts holes and then our hole for our kill switch we're good to go I think that's all we need to mount all right there's my gauge cluster bezel dealio uh, really all that needs to be all that's left to figure out is how exactly I want to mount it to this. I might just have to self tapper it, oh, but there's not a lot of meat there. I don't know. There's just not really any good way to mount it um, without going real elaborate and building a crazy bracket system, which I'm not trying to do all that. So I don't know. I'll try to figure it out, mount it, get it done. We can move on to the seat. I want to get this junky piece of junk out of here and mount the new sparker that I have for it in there. if uh, anything works still. <laughs> oh man, I wish I had a better method for attaching it to the dash here, but the plastic's just all destroyed. The one piece of metal, I tried to go into it and it broke. So uh, yeah, that didn't quite work out for us. Uh, where's the thing? There it is. All righty, we got it done. Let me turn these fans off. They don't need to be on. Check it out. Oil pressure, coolant temp, kill switch, ready to rip. That's all we need, oil pressure and coolant temp. I mean, I'm happy with it, definitely doesn't look great. I might, if I have to take it out for, let me turn this thing off. If I have to take it out for an extended period of time, ah, oh man, I almost wanna do it now. Think I'll black it, or at least spray paint it black for sure. Not huge on the aluminum look with the black, but this is a beater car. I have to keep reminding myself of that. Beater cars get beater parts. <laughs> Should make a shirt that says that. Beater cars, beater parts. All right, cool. Well, now that's done. Looks a little cleaner. 
gauges in and working. Also exciting, again, OBD2 port, perfect spot. So getting there, one step at a time, this thing's becoming a less, less junky piece of junk. <laughs> All right, uh, next thing I wanna do is pull this seat out and try to get my other seat in there. Either gonna make new mounts or just make, uh, adapt it to this seat mount that we have here. So the two problems we have with this seat setup, one, we have a much nicer seat and this seat is very old and janky. I had this thing, I got this thing in a S13 that I got a long, long time ago and it was beat up then. I drove with it, uh, I let someone drive my car, they totaled that car and this seat was in that car when it got totaled. So. I'm sure it's it's bent to some extent, and I just hate this seat. I've always hated this seat. So anyway, we've got this one, which is just a new seat. It's the same style. I really don't like these frame style seats. I much prefer a fiberglass bucket, uh, but I sat in this one, it's pretty comfortable. So definitely an upgrade over that. <laughs> so we just gotta figure out how to attach it. All right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go put this seat in there, set it just down on the ground and see how that is height wise. Because with the way that other seat was, I highly doubt we would fit with a helmet on. I should have tried, but I feel like our head's going to hit the roll bar. So we need to get the seat lower if possible. So we might be better off starting from scratch with this. Well, that's like the right amount of lean back. That's definitely works. So we're gonna build our own little very simple mounts. We'll basically come straight off the front, angle them down, go into the factory mounts, and the back probably just come straight off, holes down. All right, this shouldn't be too terrible. Uh, let's get to work. You know what? Since I won't do it if I finish the seat uh, beforehand, let's clean this thing out real quick. Let's just dig all this crap out of here clean it out, vacuum it, and be done with it. Because this thing, it, the, the stuff, if you saw the drift video, you heard it, it just flies around back and forth. It's terrible, terrible. So let's clean it. We'll put some gloves on. We don't know what's in here. pretty satisfying it's not mint clean but it's a lot cleaner than it was which is nice because this car the everything in it's so simple and I, I like it being neat and simple alrighty well I've just been kind of jamming through this you can see the three holes uh, trying out different seating positions I was gonna make it adjustable but it yeah don't feel like dealing with all that uh, but anyway we've got our two front brackets we'll tie these together with a bar across and then our rear will be really simple essentially just like a bar across bolting in and then two side bolts i think we can get away with bolting it on the sides i, I don't know let me i'm going to test fit it again and then we'll see uh what we can do about the rear but the front's almost done we'll have to drill our holes in the right spot and tie them together but other than that the front is almost done fits good got it in the right spot sweet <laughs> All right, I just gotta get some hardware with big washers tomorrow to throw in the back here for the back bolts. We'll leave the cooling system, go take this thing for a quick drive and we are done. So I will see you guys in the morning for that, but calling it a night, it's late. All right, one test fit with the seat halfway bolted in. Yeah, it's definitely in a good spot. I think my head will clear the cage with the helmet. Oh, it's gonna be tight, man. I do wish it sat a little lower, but I can't take the pad out. So we shall see, but definitely fits good. I'm in the right spot leg wise and shifting handbrake wise, everything feels good. So finish her up in the morning, almost done.
You know, I can't even be mad that this project spilled into today because what a beautiful day. It is a perfect day. I really thought our winter was gone for good and it was gonna get only get hotter from here, but today is 60 degrees sunny blue. Oh, I love it. I can't I can't be in a bad mood on days like this. I just I'm as happy as I can be. Took the old subs to Walmart to get all our stuff. Man, I'm really starting to fall in love with this car. It's so fun to drive. It makes almost 300 wheel, weighs 2,800 pounds. Good tires, good grip, good coilovers. I love it, man. I love this thing. So anyway, we've got a bunch of distilled water. Um, it's one of those things, like, I always need it, you know? I do something with the cooling system. I need to add water back. I need distilled water. I gotta go to Walmart and get it. It's always a nuisance. It takes, you know, 30 minutes, an hour out of the day, uh, which, which kills a lot of time. So, anyway, got stocked up on that. Was on a bit of a buy-in mission. Bought a bunch of other shop supplies that I've been down on. And I'm gonna go through, this is kind of like my shelf with all my fluids and stuff. I'm gonna go through later today after this video and reorganize this stuff before I dive into the next project. After the FC is out of here, we are gonna be diving back into the Fummins build. I'm gonna be refreshing the engine, painting it, all that, and then putting it in the truck and pretty much everything from there. So I wanna kinda of get the shop cleaned up before we dive back into that and make my life easier. Last thing I did too, I, I got a battery for the soups. Um, it's had a battery out of one of the bins part out Miatas in it, and it's not quite enough battery for the car, so these Walmart Everstart value craft whatevers are like 50 bucks a battery. I mean, you can't beat it. I have one of my Miata for like four years. Uh, but anyway, enough jibber jabber. I'm gonna get this stuff out. We're gonna finish up the FC and we're gonna go take it for a drive. Perfect day for us to test drive the FC to Mexico with no plate. Beautiful out. All right, well, I didn't do a great job bringing you guys along for the party, but the seat is bolted in. Harnesses are in. We gotta snug these bottom ones up a little bit more. Uh, but everything fits good. I'm in a good spot. Can reach everything fine. I think, oh man, we're still not gonna have head clearance. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to try my helmet on. The thing that's, it, this pad is like almost removable. I guess I might try to mess with that, but let's take this thing for a drive. All right, well, just kidding. We gotta believe the cooling system, but helmet clears. It touches a little bit on this bar, but that's pretty much guaranteed. Um, but it clears up here. Yeah, we got a decent bit of room and we're right in the spot we need to be to kind of be in between these bars here. So that's good. We won't have to mess with the cushion. So cool. Let's uh, bleed the cooling system and then we'll go for a drive on this beautiful day. All right. So this is how I have to bleed the cooling system on this car. I need to get one of those funnel things. Uh, but basically I got to jack the radiator up to bring the fill point above the highest point of the engine. Otherwise it just won't fill up at all. So I put some of this Mishimoto super coolant in it, uh, liquid chill. This stuff works really good for like performance cars and stuff and OE stuff. But anyway, I put some of that in there since it's an iron block just to help. Uh, when you run straight water, an iron block gets so muddy. So this, this helps and you need some sort of additive, some sort of glycol, something uh, for the, the lubrication benefits for the water pump. But anyway, I'm gonna let this thing warm up and up to open the thermostat, bleed it all out, and then we're gonna go for a rip. All right, so there wasn't really cooling in the upper and lower hose. So what I ended up doing, I ended up pulling the, draining the system, pulling the thermostat out, cleaned everything up, put it back together, filled it back up, bled it, and now we're mint. With the fans on, it gets down to 140. I let it get up to 200, turn the fans on. Cruise down to 140 sitting here. So just like the Miata, the Miata will go down lower than that if I let it sit with the fans on. So sweet. I think we got our cooling system dialed. Last thing we're gonna do before the drive real quick, Matt Happel, my buddy, Sloppy Mechanics, sent me a tune file um, with just some changes made because I had a bone stock tune file on here, like if this was in a truck uh, with just VCM deleted. So we're gonna put that on and we're gonna go for a drive. See how it is. All right, let's go take this thing for a spin. Well, you know, we should put our gloves on just to uh, get the full effect. And then that way, if we get pulled over in Mexico with no tag, the cops will think we're street racing and we'll just go straight to jail and don't have to worry about a ticket. Logical. The seat is way more comfortable. I need to grab my wallet. Hold on. If we do get pulled over, I should at least have some ID.
Robotics, such a loser. The Volvo electric power steering pump has been working really well. The steering feels super like uniform, like it doesn't feel more or less assist in different spots. It's smooth, it's light, but it's not too light. I really like it. I mean, we got pretty much everything sorted. We got good oil pressure, good cooling temp. Again, both fans working. got everything done we wanted to get done I like how simple and clean this car well not clean but simple this car is it's very minimalistic you know oil pressure cooling temp that's it don't need anything else keep it simple one seat you know I don't know I'm really really happy with how everything went getting this thing ready for the compound and now it is ready for another compound trip which again we will be going before the next clutch kickers round which I'm really excited about get some more seat time before the next comp and get to drive this thing more with hopefully at least the issues we know have sorted out. I'm sure we'll, more will arise, as always, but you know we, we fixed everything we knew we needed to fix, so I'm hyped to drive this thing again. But for now, that is gonna be it for this video. I'll see you guys for the next one. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.